We're going to start diving into the prehistoric times. So if you remember, we've talked about prehistory was the time before history was written down. So we're going to talk about those people and then how they survived during that time period. So in class, we're going to read parts of what's called a studies weekly, which looks kind of like a newspaper and it gives information about the topic. So we're going to start reading here. Then it's going to talk about kind of their everyday life. The stomach ruled the lives of the earliest humans. They would spend each day trying to find food to eat to stay alive. They ate birds' eggs, berries, mushrooms, rabbits, whatever they could find to settle those hunger pains. Scientists call these people hunter-gatherers. And unlike today, the earliest humans didn't have someone to say, hey, don't eat that, it's poisonous. People learned by trial and error. If someone ate a red berry, they got sick and died. Then others would learn and remember not to eat that berry. The earliest humans were nomadic, which means they didn't have a permanent home. Instead, they wandered around following animals, their food supply. So would caveman be a good term for these people? Probably not, since most didn't have a cave to come back to each evening. Scientists think the earliest type of shelter was climbing a tree at night for protection from animals. For protection and to help search for food, the earliest humans lived in large groups called extended families. An extended family might include parents, children, aunts, uncles, cousins, and others. Now we're going to come down here and this kind of gives a little neat expert, you know, kind of connecting it to our world today. And it says ancient grains for modern lifestyles. Have you ever wished you could go back in time to visit some ancient cultures? That may not be possible, but there is a way you can get a taste of what life was like. A lot of natural world, a lot of the natural world has stayed the same, including many of the fruits, vegetables, and grains that grow all over the world. Trucks, planes, and ships can bring food from any country to grocery stores everywhere. You don't have to live in Florida to enjoy an orange. And you don't have to have lived in ancient Ethiopia to try some teff. More people are becoming interested in ancient foods that were popular thousand years ago. Grains like quinoa, teff, kamut, spelt, buckwheat, and amaranth are all thought to be ancient foods. But corn, wheat, and rice are probably just as old. Nutritionists agree that naturally grown food is usually healthier than foods that contain additives or that have been refined. A nutritionist is a scientist who studies different foods and their effects. Many of these new old foods can be found in grocery stores and supermarkets. Look at some labels next time you go shopping. You may be surprised at what you discover. So we're going to talk a little bit more about these prehistoric humans. New discovery. Some discoveries were made by accident. Fire was most likely discovered by accident. Perhaps lightning hit a tree, causing a fire. Maybe someone read, rubbed two sticks together and, or struck two stones against each other and created a spark. Fire certainly changed the lives of prehistoric people. Scientists believe humans first used fire about 400,000 years ago, probably to frighten away animals. Over time, people began to use fire for light, warmth, and cooking. Now we're going to talk about the weapons that early humans would have used. The earliest weapons humans had were their hands. But coming upon a huge bear and fending it off with just your hands was probably not very successful. But humans did have an advantage over the animals, opposable thumbs that allowed them to pick up and hold objects. The earliest people probably threw things like sticks and stones at wild animals. It took thousands of years for them to think of sharpening these stones and sticks and fastening them together. 
a very handy stone for the earliest humans was called flint. Flint cut well and was easily broken. It was a sharp stone and was used for making arrowheads, scrapers, knives, etc. Fido joins early man. Taming of animals for domestication happened about 12,000 years ago. The first domesticated animal was probably the wolf. Hunters may have found a litter of wolf pups and kept them to raise as food. Raising their own food allowed prehistoric people to settle in one place. They would no longer have to go searching around for their food because they had it right there with them. As time went on, Domestication also provided wool, milk, and labor. You know, think of a horse pulling a plow, that kind of thing. The wool was used for clothing, the milk provided nourishment, and having animals to haul things made life a little easier. Early settlements. Most early settlements were near rivers or streams. Water provided fish for food, transportation, and fertile land for crops. People and animals also needed the water to drink. Hunters often killed animals as they drank from the stream or river. Now that they have kind of some of these new things, farming begins. Because early humans were nomadic, they may have never noticed what happened to the seeds they spit out of their mouths. When they started to settle in one location, they noticed that seeds sprouted and grew. Early humans learned they could actually grow their food. This was about 11,000 years ago. Agriculture or growing crops had begun. Early humans no longer had to spend entire days searching for food. This was a wonderful change that helped early humans have time to develop better clothing, weapons, tools, pottery, and painting. You know, now that their main goal is not just to find food, they were able to use, you know, their minds and their energy to do different things and to come up with new ideas. So cave paintings, why do you draw? Probably for something to do or to express yourself. Scientists think pe prehistoric people drew on cave walls for the same reason. Additionally, Paintings may have been used to brag about a successful hunt. You know, think about when you catch a really big fish, what do you do? You take a picture. Well, it's kind of the same thing. They were making their picture. Or as a magical wish for success in a hunt. Some paintings may have had early religious meaning. Early humans painted with charcoal, berries, and minerals mixed with water, animal fats, and oil. They used feathers, sticks and hands as painting instruments. Some of the oldest cave paintings were found in Chavot Cave in France. Its drawing may be more than 30,000 years old. Paintings of bison, deer, lions, owls, and panthers, two animals never before seen on a cave wall, were found. Red stencils of someone's handprint, perhaps a signature, was also found. Would you believe that no cave paintings have yet been found that show clouds, the sun, trees, rivers, campfires, tents, or mountains? Cave artists also rarely drew birds, fish, and snakes. Coming together. Extended families would eventually find other extended families to exchange surplus or extra goods with. Later, extended families joined together to create larger communities. But <laughs> this created problems. Different families needed to cooperate to make the community successful. And that wasn't always easy. They needed rules to live by. To help remember rules, a new idea would come about, a writing system. Early people developed picture writing to help remember the laws. And with that, prehistoric people entered a new era, historic times, meaning that now they were going to begin writing down history. So we're gonna talk about caves here. So should prehistoric cave paintings be open to the public? 
So we were talking about the cave paintings here and how they found them. So authorities in the La Paz cave in France noticed that visitors' breathing was causing mold to form on the cave paintings. The paintings date back to about 15 to 20,000 years ago. If they didn't do something, the paintings would be ruined. They made a drastic decision. They closed the cave to the public. Now, many other caves with paintings are also closed or limited to only have a few people a day. At the Lacroix Cave, a replica cave was made close to where the real cave is found. Using photographs and painting methods that the earliest humans used, Lacroix Cave was recreated down to the same nooks and crannies of the original. It was made from concrete and painted by present day artists. What do you think? Should caves be closed to the public to help preserve them? Kind of a thought provoking question. Just kind of thinking about it. Should they be closed to the public or should the public be able to go look at them? Now we're going to talk about the Catalahoyuk. In central Turkey, southeast of the city of Konya, archaeologists were evacuating Catalahoyuk, a Neolithic town that was settled 9,000 years ago. Scientists say Catalahoyuk, meaning forked mound, is one of the largest settlements found to date. It is estimated that 10,000 people called this area home. The settlement stretches over an area the size of 50 soccer fields. It was first discovered in the late 1950s. Archaeologists from Turkey, Great Britain, the United States, and many other countries are involved in studying the site. The people that lived in Catalahoyuk built their houses of mud brick. The buildings were packed tightly together and there are no streets. Archaeologists say that to get into the houses, people climbed in through holes on the roof. Beautiful murals, paintings on a wall, have been found inside the mud buildings. Artifacts made from wood, metal, and earthenware have also been uncovered. So this man, John Swagger, has worked to reconstruct what Catalahoyuk may have been like when people lived there. And that's a picture of it. Now up here, we're going to talk about Atsi the Iceman. So in 1991, hikers found a body in the Otsul Alps near the border of Austria and Italy. The frozen body was very well preserved in the glacier, still in the clothes and carrying tools. What made the discovery so amazing is the body was that of someone who lived about 5,300 years ago. This is the most preserved body found of anyone who lived so long ago. The body was named Otzi for the Alps where his, he was found. Otzi was found wearing a fur hat, a long grass cloak, and a leather jacket. His leather shoes were stuffed with straw and he carried a bow and arrow, a copper axe, and a bark container that held grains of wheat. Cutting it open his stomach, scientists were able to see that before hiking up into the mountains, Otzi had eaten a cracker, some plants, and some red deer meat. They also found few bits of sloes, which is fruit of a blackhorn tree, and eggs of whipworms in his stomach. Such worms may have caused stomach pain and diarrhea. Otzi had 57 tattoo marks on his lower back, ankles, and right knee. Scientists think these tattoos of dots and dashes had something to do with medical practices of his time. When he was found, Otzi held a knife and had cuts on his hand. He also had wounds from being pierced with an arrow. An arrowhead was found in one of his shoulders. Researchers believe Otzi died from blood loss or from a blow to the head. After being defrosted for a short time to be studied further, Otzi is now resting in a deep freeze display in, south of, in the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Bolzano, Italy. So this is some of the information just about early humans and prehistoric men, or prehistoric people. So 
if you go into your assignment on Teams, this is what it looks like. It says to watch the video, what you're watching now. And then you click on here to fill in the crossword and answer the questions. Now, you want to make sure you click edit in the browser. And if you're watching the video, perks to you because I'm deciding that this crossword is not worth trying to fill out. So, lucky day, do not do the crossword. So, all I am expecting you to do is this cave art right here. So, you're going to answer the questions using this map. So like the first question is asking you, in which country is the Altamira cave? So you're going to look for which star says Altamira next to it. And then you're going to look to see which country it's in. So we have Portugal, we have Spain, and we have France, and here's Italy and Germany. So we're looking at the map of these countries and figuring out where that Altamira cave is. And then you're going to go through and answer questions two through five and then now here is where you're going to write down four facts you learned about cave paintings from what I read to you today. So you're going to answer these questions using the map and then here you're going to tell me four facts that you learned about cave paintings from what you listened to today. If you have any questions definitely message me on Remind, send me an email or send me a chat here on Teams. And again, reminder, don't do the crossword. Don't worry about the crossword. When you finish filling in your questions, you've answered your four questions, you're going to click close, because remember it automatically saves. Click close, and click turn it in, and you'll be good to go.